I've done this before and uh, I found that very interesting. I've seen this, so many views on this video and uh, I decided to do another one. So I pulled out another few parts and to which are very similar or which are easy to confuse. And I'm going to explain you the differences and what you have to look out for, especially when you restore a car or you have bought a car which is not complete. So stay tuned right until the end and make sure you subscribe, sign the bell and write a comment if you like. Thank you. pretty much the same from the outside but it has a difference on the inside here you see this is a series one the um, the early one and you notice there's a chrome ring around you have the uh, the ears on the black fields that is the original and when you turn it around you usually find the part number engraved here on the rear which is here and then uh, this one also has, here's a date, here's 966, is uh, also scratched in here. And so this is a genuine one, 966. And we'll probably go on the on the 2 plus 2 we're just restoring. So this is a genuine um, early series one with a metal piece. And that, with, with a metal piece in here. And that is what I want to point out. This is... Where the, um, where, this, where the rod of the horn push is sitting in and with that you give contact and blow the horn. And then you see this one, which is also an original, is still on the black, on the black fields here. But you note the black, the black surround ring instead of chrome. Might have been some uh, cost saving factors, but uh, you also see here, here you see the foam. And there was no no metal required here because you had you had the horn push on the um, on the indicator stalk I think on the on the series two and this tells you is this a 69 and Gloria probably was the was the name who mounted this so this is something you need to know and don't wonder if one has the firm in here and I think this is just is a bit different it does not have the metal piece here's a metal piece in here and here's just the foam underneath so you just cannot take that out it is missing the metal in here so it's just for you to be aware when you buy these things there is this minor difference what you don't see from the outside you only notice from the other side what you can do you can put this in here these are interchangeable but then you need to have still that metal thing in here. So that is one of the 10 items I'm showing you today. And here we have the, um, the quarter light catches and on of the fixed head cube. And you see, and you might think they're all the same, but they are not. Here you see, this is the second version only. There was, there's another version before this, which has, which has a longer leg here because, um, of the construction and then they found out that it didn't hold because the mounting for this on the window was in driving direction so the first cars needed to be a bit longer to reach that angle here then they turned the mounting on the windows they turned inwards towards the cabin and these were all soldered to the frame where later ones were screwed on the mounting for this for this end here so they had to change this leg and um, and you see here are the early ones which have a shorter intermediate leg but then there's this lot longer one and that had to be introduced and that is what I want to point out if you have the early cars you need one of these 
this round lever was the first version and then they um, they opted for this one which is maybe a bit easier to twist or turn but um, function is the same and then this came when you had the crash rolls in the fixed head coupes and you had to bridge the crash roll which was going on you remember the early coupes they only had the early coupes they only had the um, um, a contrail going down towards just above the hinges and the later fixed head coupes they had the crash roll going all around the window and coming back to the B post so that had to be bridged and um, that is why it has the longer so make sure you buy the right one and you make sure you understand which model you have and here's another thing I wanted to show which can easily be confused now here they are different that is black and that is, is primed but uh, but basically what are, they look the same but you notice that this this is the um, the crankshaft breather exhaust which goes back into the um, air intake we have this is the thinner one and that is that is the early one you see and this is the breather this is the breather house part which is coming out at the um, at the cylinder head at the front and is going down passing between the distributor and the um, and the um, the balance pipe and it's coming out and it's coming out actually somewhere here at the engine and it is it is mounted here and you see that this one here is a lot thinner or smaller in diameter than the later one and um, the later ones also had this diameter as uh, you see this I could I can I can get that in here and that that should not be the case this is only this is a 38 and this is a four don't know exactly when they changed it from the small to the big one might be with the new carb system or with the new air intake the um with a manifold but this does not fit to this pipe and vice versa and let me see if they have this hole if that is also increased yes and you see here that this hole here is a lot smaller than on this one on the black one so this is something you should be aware of when you reassemble the car or you have um, a project where not all parts were in Make sure you have for the 4.2, I don't know if that is important, but it should, it should, at least it should match. So the, the thinner, the smaller crankshaft breather pipe goes to the 3.8 for the um, smaller intake here. And the 4.2 had a wider one. And here's something I discovered myself. And I was wondering why the ref counter didn't work. So these are the generators for the ref counter. And they look they look both the same. And I think the only function is to get the get the ref counter indicating. And then I found out by chance, because it didn't work, that this bit is a different height than this one. And when I when I put them one over the other, so in parallel, you see there's there's about a gap of three millimeter. And that might be just enough for this one not to catch the dog which is running on the camshaft. So if, you, if your ref counter doesn't work, doesn't show, you might try to find another generator which is a bit longer. And I'm trying to measure that in a bit, but you might already see that the right one is further up. And you see here, this is sitting in a, in a recess here where this is on top. You see the difference in here? This is further in, and where this, this, this is further in, where this is further out. And that might be just the distance where this one doesn't catch the opposite side. So I found that out by chance because the rev counter wasn't working, so I took this one and um, it didn't. I was wondering, and then I, then I measured that. And actually, when you see, it's hard to measure. What you could 
do is put them down. But you see, what you see is that when you put them in parallel, if I if I will put them like this, you see they are inclined. So we we'll have to get them flat on here, and then you see there's a gap, and actually that is caused by the by the um, by the type the shaft is built. So this here you see this is further in as a recess. This is further out. They can tell you already that they are different. So if you have a problem with the ref counter, try first. Try to find another one and that might work. And here again we see two similar items, which are two chem covers. Obvious, easy, there's no difference, but there is. And uh, I will show you, and that has to do with these small bits. They look the same from one side, but in the profile you already see this one has a groove. And that has to do with the chem covers. And um, so this was a type where the rubber, where the rubber seal was just sitting on here. And you can imagine that had to be different. Here the rubber seal is sitting in the groove. And that tells us here on the camshafts. So you see here the groove, you see the groove on here. And um, you could get this one in here, but it would stand out like this. So the correct one for this chem shower, and these are the early ones, the correct one is this. So the seal, the rubber seal is coming coming in the, into the outer groove on here. And that is how it's being sealed. And that might have not been the best idea. And that is why they changed the chem covers at the, at the rear. That's the rear end. And here you see there's no... And, and here you see there's no groove at all and this is where this then goes in there's there's a thinner thinner rubber seal in here and that goes right in here and sits like this so the rubber groove seals the chem shaft the chem cover here with a groove entirely and this would not work you could try to get that on here and might be might be tight but that is not the purpose so there are two variants of these and two different chem covers and this one actually is the later one and has the part number C19012 what you see in here and that is a slightly later one you see that here 01912 and this is the early one for the early cars and that has a number C7186. So remember the early cars had different chem covers and can be easily recognized from the outside because you would always see the rubber seal in here. If you don't see the rubber seal on early cars, you probably have taken this one and pushed it in, which is which is wrong actually. It is, I mean this is all for the purists. And here you see something which is um, which needed a, a skilled eye. And this is actually very rare. And uh, what you see here, these are two fuel lids. And you think, so what might be the difference to those? But these are for, for the fixed head coupe. This is the early one and this is the later one. And you will see this is a more squared shape Whereas this is more, you know, is more inclined, has more angle on, on here, and this is has to do with the with the valley between the um, between the body and the rear wheel arc. You have that. I explained that in another video or uh, on my website. This one is lot is is not as deep as the later cars. So you see the shape. If, if you put them next to each other, like this one, then you see this is angled. And when I put that, this is more straight. You see that? That this is smaller, maybe a centimeter smaller here on this side than here. It is, uh, it is more obvious when you have it in the car, and then you see that, because the, the valley in the, on the body is deeper here. It goes really in and down to the, to the real tail light. So, 
this is something from the in, from the other side it looks pretty much the same just that this side here you can note this one is a lot close this one is a lot wider than here and that is where the shape the shape comes from so that is just for those for those rebuilding uh, an early coop and these are impossible to find never never really seen one and I needed one so you better make sure you have this I'm just shortly interrupting the video and I want to make sure you're aware that you can subscribe for the videos and you can also share the videos but in the setup you can also sign the bell that means you get a notification when I upload a new video and now please just watch until the end of the video without any interruptions so this is an item many people don't see because it is under the car these are mounted to the irs this is the emergency handbrake cage is a bird cage how it's called also and you see here this is the early one i think there is new old stock it looks it looks mint condition it's still cut plated and you see this this bar here so this is here is fixed to the irs same as here and you see this bar is a lot shorter than the other one and i can measure that give you the rough idea so this is you see this is about eight centimeters and this is about eight eleven and a half or 12 centimeters so there's one and a half inch difference and that also of course when you mount this on an early car with early brake you can imagine this coming further out your hand brakes is already in pulled position if you have that pulled out the other thing you recognize here is here's a synchronization adjuster with this one you can adjust the the the, the synchronization of the pads towards the, the rotors here you did not have that the only thing you had here is to just the wire for the handbrake lever but nothing else so this is this is an early one and you need to have this for the early cars this is a later one with the possibility to synchronize the um, the, um, the 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 pads important to know hard to find needless to say this is more common but uh, be aware you have a right one on the car otherwise you will have always pulled hand brakes on these when you mount them and here's another important item for the um, early cars they again they look very much the same very similar but uh, you see that they look very much the same. but then you see the difference this one only has two holes where this one has three and the funny thing is they are in different positions so you cannot mount this on this end as there are three threads on here and here only two and this is the one for the early cars which had a different tailgate you need to know that this is the one which is three you might be able to drill that but this is also longer up further up and you had you would miss the hole up here so you would um, of course it is it is it is visible for everyone but um, yeah, it is uh, just to have things right. Also, this this shape is different. You see, this is rounded, and this is straight. So this is the early one. This is what you want to have on the early coupes, and this is for all the later cars. But they look, I have to admit, they look very much the same. And if you don't know, if you have nothing to compare with, you might buy two of these and find none of them fits. So make sure you know which car you have and which part you need. And here's now another very important item, what most people don't know. The, um, the brake pedal box that has changed several times. And this is the second version. And I'm going to tell you in a minute what the differences are and this is a very original how it came from the car you still see the long the long skirt nuts here nylon nuts you still see here this is the early with the small letters the early uh, dunlop 
brake cylinder, the upper one, and and so that this one is, is mixed. And below you have the original later one with the large font, and the clutch. The, this is the clutch master cylinder. So you see here on this one, they actually mixed the. Um, so you can, if you have only one, you can use the other one for later. For later, it's not the sixty-one; it is a later. And um, most important is the design of these of these housing. That's what I want to talk about. But I just want to show that this is unmolested, untouched, never touched. This this is as it came from the car. And now I'm going to show you the few details on the box. So and here we are with the two pedal boxes, which we had. So the uh, the bellow is mounted here, the clutch master cylinder is mounted here, but um, they look the same. But you already see here, this one only has one thread, and that is holding a, um, a brass bush, where the pedal is um, is is sitting on. And um, this is the earliest version with one hole, and this one has a number. That is the number C17253. And this looks very much the same to this one. But here they have grinded the number off, and that was common. You might find some where they did not grind it off. But actually, most of them have the number grind off here. It is otherwise, it is the same part, only it doesn't have the hole. You see, this one, I'll leave it like that. That has a hole here, and this one has two holes. And it's not a brush brush anymore. It's a stain brush, a stain. Um, it's, it is a steel flange sitting on here with the uh, with a brush bush over it. So that is how it's um, yeah maintained, and um, so this is, as you see, this is the very first version. I think this was up to N sixty one, and then they had the improved version. Maybe the cost of the brass was too expensive, and they only had a small ring here. So or um, might be something, but you see the diameter here is larger as well on here, and uh, and this went on up to late 64 or beginning 64 late series 3.8 and then you have something which looks again very similar which is this one this is then the follower of this version the big difference on this one is this was an intermediate this one and this one got an, an own number C twenty four six four nine, and this is very rare. You have this this uh, nub on here, and um, and this one had this bracket. This one had this bracket. Uh, make some space. Here. This, which looks very much the same to this. So they took this off, and the reason was they now installed the brake master cylinder or the, the servo they had a servo not the bellow anymore they had a servo mounted to the bulk head and uh, underneath so behind the pedals on the outside in the engine bay so they had only this mounted here then there was here there was mounted the master cylinder which was a tandem and not the two one over the other here was again the clutch and this one was then moved with a special, with a special lever and a special pedal, and um, that was kind of improvement, but still maybe too many components on this one, and that is why this one only lasted about a year, and then so remember, this one had the big bellow here sitting with the two double um, brake masters, one over the other. This one had a tandem. There were two circuits still, but um, we still I think it had two pistons or one 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 main um, uh, master cylinder, and then it all went down to the um, to the um, 
booster to the brake booster which is mounted which was a big round thing mounted at the bulkhead and then this is so we had one two three this is the last version which we still see on the on all the 4.2 cars this is the master cylinder I was talking about this was already installed on this one you see the position is the same it is one in the top left and the the bottom right and that is the same on this one you see here you could you could just replace them it is kind of same position and um, so this again then was replaced in uh, I think in 65 and from then on you will find this pedal box on all other cars and that is really a nice pedal box very simple not much to hassle and not much to worry about it is simply mounted it has a return spring for both pedals the brake and the clutch and uh, the brake and the clutch and um, so that was as, as um, yeah a safety feature in case you had uh, like I had but then the the brake pedal the brakes the spring was broken this is to give at least the return the pedal coming back when you have to pump and that was a um, good invention really and uh, so that is the very last pedal box this was good for the um, also for the automatic just the clutch pedal was missing and in it was a different pedal and also the pedals here the pedal arms they were all different for left hand and right hand drive they had a different uh, angle and uh, you can imagine you had the tunnel on the side in the, or in the center and you always had to get away from the tunnel so just be aware there are one two three four different pedal boxes the clutch and the the manual uh, for the later cars are the same there's no difference but the components have to fit together and get the right parts on your car and here's another thing this is a genuine um, Jagu genuine jaguar part this is a tailgate hinge for later cars uh, introduced in may in may 62 and this as you can see is a bit different to this one this is of an um, of a very early car and they had these hinges they are uh, i think yeah they had different positions they were mounted differently and you see here this only was two but should also have had four but you need to have this kind of shape it is very similar but it looks terrible so um, the main issue is uh, the, the the tailgate you cannot mount these on the tailgate of an early car and you need to have this one with a flat and uh, this is a special shape cut out on the on the tailgate and on the early cars these are flat and um, so when you see these um, then you have a later one which was then later covered with uh, covers to make it look more beauty and they were covered with vinyl or leather and uh, or moquette they were very early ones and this is the the very early one 61 very early 62 and they were not covered they were a bit raw but that's how jaguar was and that's what we like <laughs>